behind the camera and through here, and maybe we'll get a chance to see him a little bit later yeah. on. He's shaking his head no, and don't do that, man. You're going to shake the camera. All right, we're going to talk about Daniel. We're going to dissect this thing, and it's kind of like, you know, reading one of those big volumes where, okay, intro, forward, and then all the chapters, but we're going to go right to the conclusion here. We're going to get the end result, or at least our best guess at the end result with Dr. Steve Lyons. So let's lay out the tracks, Dr. Steve, and then we'll show everybody a worst case and best case scenario of Danny. All right, well here's our projected path and you can see that there are two possible scenarios, a coastal track which would be the westernmost track and an offshore track which is well offshore. Now neither of these is our best track right now, our best forecast is right down the pike in between these right. two. But uh, this one, notice, would affect a lot of land all the way up into New England. This one would be well offshore. So the bottom line is what's going to happen with each of these? We, of course, we have two scenarios for each one as well. Those scenarios are a weaker and a stronger c circulation. The worst case scenario is the coastal tract that's stronger. So let's start with that one, Jim. Okay. Uh, if we look at that coastal tract that's stronger, basically what we would find then is the worst case scenario. Uh, for a category one hurricane. And the, the bottom line for that is we'd po have possible wind damage in the form of uh, tree damage and power lines out, power outages. That could be from North Carolina all the way to New England if it's a category one hurricane in that area. Uh, dangerous surf that would be much higher and some uh, uh, water rise from the surge and the wave setup that could cause some coastal flooding and some beach erosion. Localized inland uh, street flooding is possible also where the core of the circulation, if it were to develop, would uh, uh, come all inland. Right. So you know, the offshore, offshore track, track and a weaker system, we'd have light winds all the way up the coast. Most of the winds would be well offshore in the eastern quadrant. Uh, the, still have some dangerous surf, especially in New England, but it wouldn't be as high. We still have some deadly rip currents, but the beach erosion would be minimal. And most of the rainfall would remain offshore in the eastern quadrant, sort of in a hook shape or a half moon s circulation that's offshore. But so bottom line is both have impacts for New England, whether it's weak. But I want to ask you this, what's worse, coastal track weak or offshore track strong? Offshore track strong. We don't want it anywhere near the coastline. As far right. offshore as we can get it, the better off we are. All right, Dr. Steve, we're going to come back in just a second. Let's go out and show you the rest of the forecast. And I want to talk to Jim Wilson, who not only grew up in New England, but also went to Linden State College, like yours truly. And there's Jimmy. He's been helping us out tonight, along with Matt behind the camera. Jimmy, let's go back uh, and, and recall a hurricane that you remember rolling up in toward New England, where you thought, you know what, I'm a little bit too close for comfort. With sure. This. I mean, Jimmy, there's been a lot of storms that have come up the eastern seaboard. And, you know, like we've seen Hurricane Bell in 1976. I was a young lad, 16 yeah, so years old, and this little baby right here. Yeah, right in here. Point this out to everybody, and look at what's interesting about this. I mean, isn't this about where Danny is right now? It's right about where Danny and is. Right. See how you went from nothing to a hurricane. So it can be done, Dr. Steve. It can be done. Right. Absolutely. This one, though, I think it's got a little difference. It's you know, it's more sheared. But it's interesting thing is, once it gets picked up by the trough and it races up the eastern seaboard, you know, in Long Island and outer New England, you got to be ready. I remember when I was 16, we were staying at the Point Judith Beach House with uh, on Portia Thompson there in the galley. Nice. Point. Yeah, we had a good time. But you know, the the, the hurricane came up and uh, on Portia said, "We're getting out of here because the water came up right to the you know the house because we were you know near the dunes." So just like Hurricane Bell, Gloria, uh, Noel, in 19, was it 2007, Jim? 2007, the, the, the water right. came up, we lost power. So you gotta be careful of these storms as they race up the eastern seaboard. We wanna make sure that we have the uh, precautions ready. Heck, my cousin in uh, Hurricane Bob was sailing boats up the east coast for, uh, for a living and uh, he got caught by Hurricane Bob and had to ditch the boat up there uh, on the outer uh, banks of uh, Cape Cod. So. We're a tough bunch uh, up yeah. there in New England, but you know what, Mother Nature uh, rules the roost, uh, obviously, especially if you go back and look at the, uh, the Halloween storm, uh, and, and obviously the one that took the, those fishermen there off the, off the Cape. But let's talk about this. I mean, I guess bottom line is you don't need a strong, strong hurricane, or really even a strong tropical storm to have big impacts no, in New England. No, you just gotta you know, be mindful that there's heavy surf and waves, and uh, it doesn't take much uh, to get into trouble. Um, I remember the big, the big one back in 1938. Now my grandfather had to swim out of a building because he was a uh, working in the city. So weather's in your veins, bro. right? Right, exactly. That's where I got it from, Grandpa. You know, he was a big hurricane nut. Uh, he, in 1938, you know, he he was in a building. He was uh, working as an electrician, and a boiler went out. He was in the building when the water came up. Had to swim out of the building to save his Jeez. life. So you just got to be ready for that kind of uh, activity. Now we won't have that with this one at all, Jim. This one's going to probably be weaker. It's not 38, but uh, you know what I really appreciate tonight, Jim? Sure. It's the fact you didn't wear your red socks. Be ready up there, in New England. Thank you very much. Point, yeah. Judith. Be ready, Jimmy. Said giving you the warning there. So, Dr. Steve, you know, bottom line is here as we walk back up to the expert area with all the computers is we don't need a strong system to have 
have pretty big impacts into New England, do we? That's right. And the other thing is it doesn't even have to strengthen to have the winds increase on the east side. Is all it has to do is move faster so to the north. So even right now, as pathetic as this thing is, just it's good, the fact that it's going to move north and a high pressure is going to move into the northeast of it, we're going to have wind and impacts and possible power outages. That's right. And it's going to be accelerating. So the east side of the circulation over here, the winds are going to increase. And, and so for the same circulation, it's going to be stronger on the east side if it's moving faster. And quick timeline, when do you think it'll be? Uh, basically, we're talking Outer Banks of North Carolina in, a, in about 48 hours and about 72 to 90 hours. Saturday. We'll yeah. be right back. All right, where am I, courtesy of Doppler Tom? Thank you very much for these. There's clue one, clue two, clue three. I'm home to the Kmart and to Little Caesars Pizza. And the answer is Garden City, Michigan. Doppler Tom, thank you so much. If you've got one, send it away as well. We'd love to see it. Yeah, Doppler Tom is doing a great job at stumping everybody, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's not great. making it easy on everybody, that's for no. sure. Thank you all, though, for guessing. We certainly appreciate it. Keep guessing away every night. Yeah, we appreciate it. Let's take you out in Atlanta, Georgia. We are talking flash flood potential here, big time around Fayetteville, Georgia, down toward the East Point. Look at that severe thunderstorm warning for Clayton Fulton. I would be shocked, Atlanta, if you did not get a flash flood warning out of this as well, Look given the that. lightning strikes Urban's got there, 197 in the last 10 minutes. And it's increasing, and when you see increasing flash rates, that means increasing rainfall rates. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Thank you for tuning in. Nicole just stepping up to the gate. Nicole and Paula are up she the She looks fab, hour. too. <laughs> Stick around. Good night. John and I may not